Hi friends. Okay, um, I'm staying here again with breaking curses and I don't know, you know, I think the last eight or nine years, the Lord has been very kind to me to, me, to allow me to understand the binding and loosing about all of the emotions and all the spirits that are involved in that, about, you know, naming your sin, I mean, like just confessing your sin and he forgives you, but I think there's so much, it goes so deep. We don't understand what we're doing and how spiritual it is. Okay, so now I want to break the curse that comes with marital unfaithfulness. And we've lived in a time period where there's not much faithfulness. There's not much commitment. And we've crossed lines that should never be crossed. We've done things that should never have been done. Um, and there's a curse that goes with it. I need for you to look at this because this is a curse against your body. And my pastor was preaching on some things this on Sunday that I'd never heard before. And I'm going to share it with you. But anyway, I'm going to go to the story. This is the next story. I really wanted to go in with the curses. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. Okay, I'm going in order. And the Lord said to Moses, this is Numbers 5, starting in verse 11. And the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Suppose a man's wife goes astray and she is unfaithful to her husband and has sex with another man, but neither her husband nor anyone else knows about it. Doesn't matter, guys. You may not be caught. She has defiled herself, even though there was no witness, and she is not caught, was not caught in the act. Now, according to Old Testament, y'all, if she were caught in the act, she would be stoned to death. And uh, that was a, do you know, you got to stop the madness. God knew what he was doing when he made such severe consequences for actions, because he knows what the repercussions of them are. <sighs> But anyway, now we're kind of living in a time period where there's, we don't think about that. But okay, um, but she wasn't caught. If her husband becomes jealous and is suspicious of his wife and needs to know whether or not she has defiled herself, the husband must bring his wife to the priest. He must also bring an offering of two quarts of barley flour to be presented on her behalf. Do not mix it with olive oil or frankincense, for it is a jealousy offering, an offering to prove whether or not she is guilty. Now the priest will then present her to, the, to stand trial before the Lord, and she must take some holy water in a clay jar and pour it into it, pour it, into it dust he has taken from the tabernacle floor. And when the priest has presented the woman before the Lord, he must unbind her hair and place her hands on the offering of proof, the jealousy offering to determine whether her husband's suspicions are justified. The priest will stand before her holding the jar of bitter water that brings a curse on to those who are guilty. The priest will then put the, the woman under an oath and say to her, if no other man has had sex with you and you have not gone astray or, and defiled your, yourself while under your husband's authority, may you be immune from the effects of the bitterness of this water. Y'all, there is a bitter pill that we swallow when, uh, when we are unfaithful to our marriage vows. Okay, and that brings on the curse. Now, but if you've gone astray by being unfaithful to your husband and have defiled yourself by having sex with another man, at this point, the priest must put the woman under oath by saying, may the people know that the, Lord, the Lord's curse is upon you when he makes you infertile, causing your womb to shrivel and your abdomen to swell. Now may this water bring the curse uh, that brings the curse enter your body and cause your abdomen to swell and your womb to shrivel. And the woman will be required to say, yes, let it be so. And the priest will write these curses on a piece of leather and wash them uh, off into the bitter water. And he will make the woman drink the, the bitter water that brings on the curse. And when the water enters her body, it will cause bitter suffering if she is guilty. Okay, guys, there is a curse. It's like... Um, I'm not going to go on because, it, and it's Old Testament, and I know that you're like going, that's Old Testament. 
But listen, um, our God does not change. And a lot of the things he did in, in the Old Testament was were for our understanding. He did a lot of things in the natural so that we could understand the spiritual. And what's happening in the spiritual is crazy. I want to go first to... Um, I want to go to Ephesians 5, and it says, As scriptures say, this is 531, A man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. This is a mystery. This relationship of marriage, this purity, undefiled oneness of one man and one woman com coming together without anybody else in between, without like defiling this holy thing, which is really Christ in the church, is a really holy thing. Um, and and if it's defiled, it brings on a curse. And this one is different from others. It's a curse against your body. And so this is, it says in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 13, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. They were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about our bodies and the Lord will raise us from the dead by his power as he raised our Lord, Lord from the dead. Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Your body is a part of Christ. Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scriptures say that two are united into one, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does, for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and it was given to you uh, and was given to you by God? Do you not, you do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Um, this body who lives in this short lifetime and gets to make choices of what spirits live in it and what we choose to do, right or wrong, was bought with a very high price on the cross at Calvary. And so Jesus mm, paid the ultimate sacrifice, gave his life as a ransom so that we could be bought back, okay, redeemed from the curse, set free. And so this is a very high price. And let me tell you, this relationship between husband and wife is an illustration between this relationship between Christ and the church. And it should be holy, undefiled. And if there is not, there is a curse. My pastor taught on this one, and I believe it's true. No other sin is inside the body. Everything else is done out. You can steal, you can, you know, murder, you can do all of those things, but it's outside the body. When you have sexual intercourse with somebody that is not your husband or your wife, then you have just uh, sin to sin that is, is against your body. And according to what my pastor said, and I believe it's true. Now in scripture, I need to go find it, but I believe it's true. This is a sin that is against your body. And so there's sicknesses and illnesses. And, you know, my pastor was saying, yeah, AIDS and, you know, STDs and all of that. But he said, he said, I think cancers can come in. I think we don't know what's being shared um, a DNA, a, uh, we don't understand the spiritual ramifications of it, but I'm going to say just the curse. There is a bitterness that is swallowed, a bitter water that is swallowed by you. And there's a curse on it if we are unfaithful in our marriage vows. So what we have to do is we have to get rid of that curse 
And the way to do it is we just come before God and we just say, God, I'm guilty. I am sorry. I have done this. I have defiled my marriage bed. Would you forgive me? Would you please forgive me? Would you cover me with your blood? I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Please take this bitter cup from me. Take this bitter cup from me, Lord. I am so sorry. And you begin to lay down your life before the altar of God. And I don't know what else he's asking you to do. If he's asking you to go, I don't know, face Jesus, open your heart wide and ask him what he's asking you to do. If you need to go to your husband or your wife or I don't know. But I mean, just do it. Just be, be, be obedient to whatever the Lord is asking you to do. Um, but from this point on, turn your back from the sin. Turn your back from the person who's enticing you. Turn off the computer. Turn off the, the social media. Get rid of everything that's in being, putting those thoughts in your mind. Get rid of it. Like, this is what it says. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. Even if it's your right hand, your good eye, you get rid of it. You get rid of whatever it is that is causing you to sin in this area. It is a bitter pill to swallow. And no one who is sexually immoral will enter the kingdom of heaven. It is written. It is written. There is a curse. And the ultimate curse is that you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. That when the final gong is sounded, that you will be left out. And so I'm telling you, we've got to break these curses, break the curses, break it off our families. There was a lady at church, I'm going a little bit long, but there was a lady at church last Wednesday. And I think she had had a tough background. I think that her family was probably had generations of this stuff. But she just said, there's spirits there. There's sexual spirits. She said, the Lord told me, get rid of all of my beds. Get rid of all of my furniture. You get rid of. And so she was just obedient. But she told us, she said, she said, my daughter left to go to L.A. And said, I thought she was going to go do some lingerie com commercials. She said, what happened is they sold her to, into sex trade and said in the last eight months, she's made that guy over $200,000. But she said, it stops here. It stops with me. I'm going to break the curse in Jesus' name. So we've got to break these sexual things off of us, this promiscuity, these um, like defiling. We've got to stop doing it. We've got to in Jesus' name. So if this is you, just give that part of yourself, lay it down at the altar, give it to him, give him your shame. Give, you, give him your sorrow, give him your guilt, give him your whatever you want, whatever you want. Say, God, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Take it all. Take it all. I don't want it anymore. Break the curse. Break it from me. Break it from my family. In Jesus' name.